So in this clip, in this clip, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of diagnostic tests and uh, a child test for sure. Perhaps later we set test, and I'll show how to use robust standard errors and all of that in MATLAB. We're going to use a file airfair.xls that will be on the Blackboard site, and uh, we'll start by importing this data set and we'll just go let me just run up to here so you can see some um, some data you can see there are some text variables you can actually see that here let's actually first look at the description of this data set you'll have that available as well and you can see there are sort of a number of airfares there are four different years airfares from four different years uh, the text variables are actually where the origin of the flight and the destination of the flight then there's the distance average number of passenger numbers the fare we're going to use that as a dependent variable going to see how well, we can explain the fare by for instance the distance and the average number of passengers um, then log fare down here okay so well We'll see if we may get back to this, just for you to get a general idea of the data. So, what we're going to start with is we just want to run a simple regression. So, what I'll need, and what I, what you need if you want to replicate that, and I recommend that, is you need the OLS ESC file. Of course, you can get that from the Eclair web page functions example code. You've seen that before. Here's the OLS test. Okay, so that's where you can get that from. So I assume you have that in your folder. We need to define y and x. So as y, we're gonna define the seventh variable, that's the fare, and as explanatory variables, we're gonna use a constant, that's the one vector, and variables five, six, and eight. Let's just see what five, six, and eight are. Distance for the flight, average passenger numbers per date, and aid the market share of the biggest carrier. So what do we expect? Distance will expect a positive number. Long and the distance, just the cost of the flight should be higher. Passenger numbers, so we'll see possibly, I suspect we would say the more passengers, the more competitions, therefore the lower the fares on, uh, on a certain flight segment. And perhaps in the other way around, the market share, the bigger the market share of the biggest carrier, the smaller the competition, and therefore the higher the fare. So possibly the signs we expect is the distance positive for passengers negative and for market share positive. Let's see where we find that. So here we select columns five, six, and eight from the data matrix. These are our three explanatory variables we call all as est. Let's go up to here. And what we get, well, we have the output here. We get a constant distance, passengers, market share. So we get exactly the same signs which we expected positive for distance, negative for number of passengers, positive for market share. And all of them seem to be clearly significant. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a white test. So let me explain explain what we do here. First, what we said, what we need for a white test. So if you have a model y equals x beta plus u, as we've done, is we need to estimate this by all s. So we've done that, that gave us a beta hat and it gives us a vector of the u hat. And for the y test, we want to run a regression of the u i hat squares on a number of variables, whatever we think may explain uh, variation in the residual variance. Now for the y test, what y proposed is that we use all the x's, so all x's and their squares and their square values. 
Okay, that was sort of the mechanical way of using values in a test for heteroscedasticity. Um, if you had particular views on which of the variables the variance, the error variance may depend, you may use these. Okay, but if we don't have a particular view, we use the right recommendation and we use all the x's and their squares. So how do we do that? Firstly, we define the explanatory variable, uh, sorry, the dependent variable for the y test. So I'll just increase the font a bit to make it easier to see. So we need the dependent variable, that's going to be our residuals. They come, they are the residuals from our OLS est function. You can always check the help OLS est to see which output the residuals are and it's the, from the outputs, it's the third output. Okay, the third output is the residual vector. So we take the residuals, put the squared values, so to the power of two. Then the explanatory variables are going to be the x's, so we'll just use exactly the same x we had before. But now we also want the squares of our variables 5, 6 and 8. So we'll get our variables 5, 6 and 8 again, but we'll take the squares of these. The dot means each individual element should be squared. And then what we do is we'll just estimate the regression again with this as dependent variable, this as explanatory variable, so we call all as s again. Perhaps we don't actually need the output. And here we have all our output. We know, of course, that what we need is the test statistic, the LM test statistic, which is n times r squared. So we need these two things from our auxiliary regression and therefore the fourth output is the number of observations and the last or the sixth output is the r squared so we need n underscore w for the byte and r2 or r squared for underscore underscore w for the byte and then we calculate the y test as just n times r squared let's just run it so far just to see how far that gets us so we'll just run it to here. Here we go. Okay, so we can check the right test. Should be it's capitalized here. So our test statistic is actually 1923 approximately. What we now of course want is we want the p value for instance for the right test or the critical value. In MATLAB it's quite easy to get p values. Let me just illustrate what we're doing here. We know in our particular case, our test statistic was distributed how? Chi squared distributed with how many degrees of freedom? Well, what have we got here? In x, we've got one, two, three explanatory variables. We have a constant as well, but that will not count in the degrees of freedom because the constant will not be able to explain variation in the squared residual. So we have one, two, three, plus three extras, okay, the squares of these. So it's going to be chi-squared distributed with six degrees of freedom. As if I just sketch the chi-squared distribution, so we're going to look something like this. And our test statistic was 1,900 and something. So let's say this is our test statistic. And the p-value is this. And the decision rule is going to be reject h naught if p-val is smaller than alpha. And let's say, say we set our alpha to 5%. So we want the p-value. Now in MATLAB there's a function called CDF um, sorry actually let me just check so I don't make a mistake I have it here already CHI2 CDF CHI2 CDF and we put in our test statistic and the decrease of freedom which is 6 in our case and what this will deliver back is the size of the area underneath the distribution up to LM. So our p-value, 
the red value is going to be, so the p value is going to be 1 minus that p value. How come I know this function chi 2 cdf in the eclair web page? You can go to intermediate programming statistical functions and there is a little list with some useful functions. Here it is c2 cdf and it explains what it does. Of course you can call help chi 2 cdf. So let's go. So here's our chi 2 cdf. We feed in our value for the y test. The degrees of freedom is the number of columns of x underscore w. That was 7. And that's 7 because it includes the constant. It includes this one. Therefore, we're asking for number of columns of x underscore w minus 1. You could have, if you know it was 6, you could have put it in immediately but then if you change something in the in the x you would have to be careful so it's always good to write your code as generic as possible and then i just print out the result let me run the code until here so the f print f command does you have to to understand exactly what we do here uh, you should possibly again consult the eclair web page that command is explained in screen output okay somewhere down here fprintf okay so there's some explanations what we do here so what it does is it basically it prints out this line white test the test statistic is this and the p-value comes in parenthesis that is zero so that means we clearly reject the null hypothesis so let's actually before we can so we know we have heteroscedasticity so it means we really want to calculate wide standard errors if we want to perform any inference on our estimated coefficients remember here are our coefficients and here are our standard errors in the, the normal OLS regression output these will be the normal standard errors and therefore these will be the t normal t values and these p-values will come from using the t-distribution, which is asymptotically standard normal. But these t-stats and the associating p-values will only be correct if we have Gauss-Markov standard errors. Now, of course, we have established we don't have Gauss-Markov standard errors because we rejected the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity very clearly. So we want at least wide standard errors. Now, how would we test for autocorrelation? Let me just close this. I'll finish this. I'm going to include that test now. Um, although we don't really have time series data, that's time series element. We'll look at that again in a second. But so the, the sense of a test for autocorrelation is limited here because we don't really have time series data, but I want to I don't want to open another data set. I'll show you how to do it. Now of course your job is mainly also to be able to know whether results make sense or not. So first the dependent variable, let me just go to file so if we have a test for autocorrelation correlation we want u now I use t as subscripts u t hat and on the right hand side we want all x's and then u hat t minus 1 u hat t minus 2 u hat t minus 3 actually I'll only use 2 Okay, so that's the explanatory variables we want. All x's that will include a constant ut minus 1 hat, ut minus 2 hat. Now, of course, remember we are losing two observations, okay, because we have two, two lags here. So that ut, ut hat, this one, 
you'll really start with you had three, you had four, all the way to the last observation. This guy here will be you had two, you had three, all the way to you had n minus one, and this guy here will be you had one, you had two, all the way to you had n minus two. So this we already have, all the x's, we need to create these three vectors. So y, let's call it AC for autocorrelation, it's going to be residuals, not squares, from 3 to end, and x, AC is going to be our original x's, that's fine, that's already there plus residual from 2 to n minus 1. Okay, so that is this guy here. And residual from 1 to n minus 2. That's going to be that last guy here, from 1 to n minus 2. So that's just the last observation in MATLAB, that's end. So that's our regression. Let's just call these guys AC. The outputs, and we have Y underscore I. Actually, you can see I made a mistake up here. That was possibly quite good. You may have seen that before in the white test. I use, I input y and x, our original data, not our y underscore w and x underscore w. So I really should include these, uh, feed in these data. So we'll actually have to reevaluate the y test in a second as well. But here for the autocorrelation test, we will now include y underscore ac as we've defined it here and x underscore ac as defined here. Now the LM test for the correlation is going to be the number of observations times the R squared. And the P for the LM test, we're going to use exactly the same formula because it's chi-squared distributed as well. But now we need to be careful with the degrees of freedom. Now we know we included two legs two lags. So I'll do it the easy way. I'll just enter two degrees of freedom here. And then we want to display LM test LM test and the P value. For the LM test. So let me just run the code until here and see what we get. I get an error message, so let's see where the problem is. 29 cat arguments not consistent. So that means here I'm putting a matrix and I have a matrix X and I am putting a vector and another vector next to each other. Now let's run the code up until here to see what the problem is. So X has four, five, nine, six rows. And what we are trying to put next to it, residuals, residuals has four, five, nine, six rows as well, but I'm not putting the entire residual vector. I'm basically cutting off two observations. So I have two less observations. What I need to do is I need to basically delete the first two observations. As I basically have to do exactly the same as what I do for the dependent variable. Okay, so let's run it again. That should work. Nah, why not? So 3 to end. So we'll run it up to here again. So we have x. Aha, uh -huh. okay. This X is a matrix. Okay, and if I want the rows, but I want to keep all columns, I need to put in 
comma and then colon saying I want to keep all column. That was the problem, I think, I hope. Let's run it and we get a result. So you see the y test is not as big anymore as it was before. It's now 185, but the p-value is still zero, so it's still clearly rejected. The LM test for autocollation actually is rejected very strongly as well. Now why is this? I said we didn't really have auto uh, time series data. Now let's, uh, I have the data opened in a, a spreadsheet. It's easier to see here. Actually, we do have some sort of time series element. If you look at the data, you can see that we have four years of data and the data are organized such that we have the same origins and destinations just in blocks of four for all the four years of data. So there is some autocorrelation between these. Now clearly autocorrelation between this one, the fourth observation, the fifth doesn't really make sense because these are different lines although have the same origin. So it, this is a bit of a difficult data structure. I didn't really want to go too deep into this. The way how we perform the autocorrelation test doesn't really make sense here. I just wanted to show you how to do it in MATLAB. And we get a clear rejection because there is this time series element in the data. But it's not pure time series data, but that's how we get a strong rejection. Uh, it was also not the byte test, it was the LM test. But I'll just add here caution not easily applicable here. Okay, so you should use comments as much as possible to make sense later of your data. So let's say we want we certainly want wide standard errors here for these for these data. So what I, I told you you don't really have to calculate them yourself. Your luck is that I have written, and other people as well, an OLS procedure that calculates or consistent or robust standard errors, hack for heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistent standard errors. Now this function I have here in my folder, OLS hack, and you can get it again from your MATLAB Christmas tree the Eclair web page, you can go to special econometric topics, robust standard errors, and if you go into example code, you will be able, if you scroll a bit down, you can see OLS hack. So just copy that as a function into your folder. That's what I've done here. Now, one little thing I want to explain about the OLS hack function is basically the same as the OLS est, just that it produces also wide and new west standard errors. I'll type oh, help OLS hack and if you look at the help function it has very much the same inputs y and x and output. It has an additional input b lag length for new west standard errors. In the lecture I just very briefly mentioned this. Actually you can leave that away. You can hand in if you want to only three inputs like for the OLSS and then MATLAB will calculate its own B and that's usually all right. But what's slightly different here is that the results are handed back as a structure. Now, I did that on purpose because it's a really good thing to, to come across a structure and again um, on the Eclair website you can read on the basic um, da, 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 yeah, arrays and structures in intermediate programming as the basic explanation of what structures are. But in short, what it does is it hands back all the results in in one sort of variable, but that variable has sort of sub variables. Dot b will have the estimated parameters. That's sort of the sub variable. Dot bse that has the standard errors, the normal standard errors, dot wh underscore bse, that's the white standard errors, dot nw underscore bse is the new west standard errors. So when I call this, so let's just run the code until here. 
including that all as hack. So what we have here, so here were our white tests, right? Now what we have here is our all as hack results and here we have handed back the white standard errors and the new vest standard errors. You can see that they differ from the normal standard errors somewhat. Okay, and we can now use them to calculate t-tests in the exercise that will be you can continue with the t-test. Okay, but I've gave you all the information you need so standard t-test. So I'll stop the video here. I just produce a second video to continue with the uh, testing for structural breaks.